Welcome back guys. Phase 2 of Season of Discovery might be live by the time you watch this. We are doing the level 40 guides for all classes. Guides where we cover overall best in slot gear, updated professions, multiple talent specs, which runes to use, and some tips and tricks. Yesterday we covered the Paladin, the Pride of the Alliance. Today you guys voted in large numbers for the Priest, the Invoker of Light and Darkness, the Bipolar class of Season of Discovery. Let me know in the comments which class you want to see next from the two remaining ones, Hunter and Warlock. There is also an updated armory link in the pinned comment if any changes or mistakes arise. If you like the series, smash like, and with that being said, let's get right into it, shall we? For the Shadow Priest Biss, we start with the Neuralink Arcano Filament Monocle, which uh, provides a lot of spell power, lots of stamina, MP5, Although we're going to talk about it soon, I don't think Shadow Priest will require MP5 anymore. There are some weird changes that came for Shadow Priests, and I'm looking forward to see how they perform. Priest and Pendant, uh, 9 spell power, 8 intellect. We have this uh, synthetic mantle into the Blood Rot Cloak, 11 spell power. And we went for the Irradiated set. It does have a lot of spell power, crit. Irradiated seems to be like a good choice here. The Dryad. Wrist bindings from Morrison Gulch, but there are a couple of other options here. We have like the PvP bracer, we have the oil stained bracers, but we also have green bracers. Now the priest can get some nice green bracers with a lot of spell power, a lot of shadow power. I think the bracers here are like 14 spell power if you get the green ones. Glimmering Gizmo Blade uh, provides 19 spell power, and then we went for the offhand with 14. There is a stuff here. I'm not sure if the final version of the stuff. We have to check when uh, when we get actually the release date. But so far, it seems like for most casters, it's going to be one hand with offhand um, beast. If you have the BFD stuff, it's still going to be quite great because it provides a lot of intellect and spirit too. But so far, so good. Dreamwave gloves, 18 spell power. Nice. Uh, volatile concussion belt. We get 1% hit and 12 spell power. Irradiated trousers, 16 spell power. Uh, 4 MP5, but we have minus 10 stamina, and all of the pieces from this set has minus stamina. Even the set bonus, the two pieces minus stamina, I, I don't really like it. <laughs> Maybe they at least just put zero on it, don't go on minus. Having an item in classic with minus stats feels like, ooh. Irradiated boots with 11 spell power, 1% hit. If you have the tailoring boots from phase 1, they're still going to be great for a long time, but the three set bonus gives an additional 11 spell power, which is great. Ring Sanguine Shadow Band, 14 spell power, 3 MP5. This is from the Blood Moon event in Stranglethorn. Second one would be Underworld Band. If you can't afford this one, because it's going to be probably quite expensive, just get the PvP one from Wars and Gulch. Invoker's Pearl, uh, 11 spell damage, but you can change it. If you have like the healing one and you want to swap to the damage one, in uh, Booty Bay, there's a lost and found vendor, and you got to be able to destroy the current one that you have and buy the other one. For 75 gold. It's going to be a hefty price, but for a best in slot item, I think it's worth it. Miniaturized combustion chamber, um, 12 spell power as well. And then we went for the one for the umbral wand of Shadow Rat, 14 spell damage. Very nice. Let's move to the talents and see how Shadow is going to perform. Five out of five spirit tap, but if you PvP a lot on the priest, you can go for five blackouts so you don't have to respect all the time between raids and so on. Also, there's going to be some massive changes to the mana regen on priest, so we're gonna see how that is going to turn out. Two points into improved shadow war pain, increases the duration for six seconds, and then I went straight up for shadow focus eight points. Now, some people might go for a shadow affinity, which reduces the threat generated by our shadow spells, but now we also have like blessing of salvation. And we also have like from the Shaman, another uh, thing that buffs the threat of the tank for 45%. So I don't think, I guess you can take one point from here and only go with six hit and then put one into Shadow Affinity or even two. But I would go without it, see how it goes. Five out of five points into Mind Blast. Shadow Rich increases the range of your Shadow Spells by 20%. And then five points into Shadow Weaving. And we went into Vampiric Embrace. 5 points into increases your shadow spell damage by 10%. Look at those buffs, man. 15%. 10%. Range of the shadow spells. And then we go into the shadow form. However, I've seen something recently. I'm not sure if it's going to go live. But apparently there's going to be a way to modify your shadow form. This is the first time I see that they modify a shadow form talent. And apparently the mana cost is going to be reduced by 50% of all spells. So if this is true... 
then goodbye shadow priest uh, mana problems i'm gonna feel bad with my mage i'm gonna have more mana problems with my mage than a shadow priest who knows we i'm looking forward to see how this is going to turn out four runes we went for the chest rune for void plague into four leg rune homunculi hopefully i pronounced that correctly um shadow fiend here it's not going to be a rune it's going to be apparently a book that it's going to drop from a scarlet monastery probably and creates a shadowy fiend attack the target and re caster receives five percent mana when the shadow fiend attacks and it lasts for 15 seconds so another way of getting mana back so imagine um shadow form reduces cost 50 percent if this is going to be true and then we have the shadow thing which is separate from the runes another way of getting mana shadow word death into the new rune which is the waste rune called the mind spike blast the targets for a specific amount of damage it's a shadow frost damage and increases the critical strike chance of your next mind blast on the target by 30 percent stacking up to three times so it's going to be a really nice synergy between mind blast and mind spike and now with the reduced cooldown on mind blast it's going to work pretty nice also notice that the mind spike it's shadow frost damage so if we have a mage in the group maybe a frost mage that goes deep into the winter chill we might be able to get even more crit the only problem that i see with a priest here with a shadow priest is that they don't really have like a damage rune for the boots i looked at them and then we have like dispersion we have pain suppression and spirit of redeemer spirit of redeemer is for healer pain suppression it feels like a pvp discipline cooldown and dispersion it's really nice for mana regen which is the third way of getting mana regen you disperse yourself into pure shadow energy reducing all damage taken by 90 percent you are unable to attack or cast spells but you regenerate six mana every one second for six seconds six percent so that's six times six 36 wow i'm good at math <laughs> so it's like a small evocation which lasts for six seconds so now we have shadow fiend dispersion and also uh, the potential of uh, the shadow spells being reduced by 50% damage. I think shadow shadow is looking really great in uh, phase 2. And I have this feeling that it's going to be slightly overpowered specifically for PvP. Because uh, if he doesn't run out of mana, he has shields, he has heals. How do you kill something like that in PvP? I don't even know. So let's move into the Discipline Priest now. For the helmet, we have the same tailoring helmet and neuralink arcano filament monocle. They couldn't get a longer name. Pendant of Homecoming is going to be good for healing. 13 spell power, 3 MP5, intellect and lots of spirit. For the shoulders, synthetic mantle. They should make another one because everyone is going to roll healers and casters for the same mantle, mail and leather. It's kind of too much. Cloak of Invention has 15 spell power, 2 MP5. And then we have the hyperconductive shimmer shirt ignore the enchant it might not be in game healing done by spells by 29 6 mp5 and 10 spirit uh, the set bonus on this one it's really nice we have 14 spirit and 7 mp5 as well thinker wrist wraps which have 6 intellect 7 spirit and 18 spell power and the epic stuff from nomer which has 11 stamina 14 intellect 15 spirit 35 spell power some damage done by arcane spells that's for a mage healer or druid and the staff will sometimes be able to shock a dead player back to life. Here it says that it cannot be used in combat. However, for this item being so unique and rare and epic, maybe they should have made it that it can work in combat. So some sort of combat uh, res for all the healers that wear it. Maybe a bit too much, maybe a bit too overpowered. But this is a really nice looking stuff. For gloves, the Dreamwave gloves, uh, 18 spell power. And then we move to the Mech Mender Sash, 24 healing spells and 4 MP5 into the hyperconductive healing pants that have 22 healing spells, 6 MP5 and 10 intellect, 8 spirit. The boots as well have uh, good stats, intellect, spirit and 15 spell power. The set is just great for healers. I think a lot of them will opt for the cloth one, but we yet have to see the final version of the items. Like I said in my previous uh, guides for other classes, I, I even chose the blacksmithing helmet, for example, for the warrior because I knew Blizzard would change it. They already did. The new helmet for blacksmith instead of 16 strength 16 stamina now has 20 strength and uh, 14 uh, stamina and the leather helmet they changed they removed entirely the i think the strength from it hypercharged gear of innovation the one with healing spells but if you do both shadow and healing you might want to go for the damage dealing one for with the other one has 11 spell power this one has 13 healing power so it's two difference but you can use it in two situations blood covenant seal 
from a Blood Moon event. Increases healing done by spells by 13. This is a really nice ring. Look at those stats, man. 8 stamina, 7 intellect, 7 spirit, 13 spell power. It looks like a level 60 ring, <laughs> kind of. We have the Void Pearl, which if you have the healing one or the damage dealing one, you can now change it in Booty Bay for 75 gold. And then Miniaturized Combustion Chamber, which has 6 intellect. There's another trinket here, Niodine Pill Bottle, which has MP5 on it. So this one, Spirit and MP5, could be good for healers, healers as well. For the wand, we have the Umbral Wand of Healing. This is going to be like really expensive for phase 2. 22 healing spells is going to cost probably hundreds of gold. It's going to be like... Uh, the ones with shadow power and the ones with uh, healing power as well are going to be expensive. Now let's move into the talents and into the runes because this priest is something that I'm really hyped for. Today we chose only one healing spec for priest because I think it's going to be the most popular of them. And me being a mage, I'm quite hyped about it because we get power infusion. So I went with 5 points into wand, 25% wand damage. Priests are still going to wand. This is never going to go away, I guess. Uh, 3 points into improved power shield. 15% to your shield into improved power word fortitude, 30%, huge. One point into silent resolve. However, I don't think you're gonna need it with the new salvation, with the new horde buffs. Horde has a similar salvation buff, but they buff the, the tank, the shamans, right? We'll see. I guess you can choose to put it wherever you want. Inner focus, important here. When activated, reduces mana cost of your next spell by 100% and increases its critical effect by 25%. If it's capable of critical effect hit. 3 points into meditation to allow 15% of your mana to continue regenerating when casting. And this is one of the first buffs that we get Divine Spirit. Which is um, a buff for everyone. Spirit. Yay! But this is rank 1. I think we're going to get 1 extra rank. It might be an extra rank here. Uh, 17. I think yeah, it's going to be 20 something. Uh, the second rank. Into Mental Agility. Which reduces the mana cost of all your instant cast spells by 10%. 5 points into Mental Strength, Mana by 10% increased, your entire Mana. Into 4 points at Force of Will, which increases your spell damage done by 4%, and the Critical Strike chance of your offensive spells by 4%. I think this uh, increases Penance as well, right? So, we go into the last one, Power Infusion. Infuses the target with power, increasing their spell damage and healing by 20% for 15 seconds. Parsers, rejoice! Caster Parsers. You're gonna priests can make money with this spec. They can charge for the the PI. No, don't do that. Don't charge for the PI. Now let's see the runes. For the rune, I went for Void Plague. I could have gone for Serendipity, but I think phase two healers are going to be more hybrid. I think elemental shamans are going to focus more on uh, elemental. I think druids are going to be focused more on spamming rats and so on. So why shouldn't the priests like compete with uh putting a Void Plague up and spamming some ones as well. I don't think the healing uh, requirement is going to be so intense. So most of the healers are going to go into something hybrid, something like a, a Discipline Priest, something that can apply some damage as well, a bit of pressure, and why not? And why not take Void Plague? For the Legroon, obviously, Prayer of Mending into Penance. Those, those two are like kind of important. And for the Waste Rune, we moved into Empowered Renew. Your Renew now heals one extra time immediately when applied and gains 15% increased benefit each time it heals from your bonus effect. In addition, your Renew can now be active on targets affected by another Priest Renew. So if you have two Priests in the group, you're going to be able to apply double Renew. Very nice. There's also another rune here that I saw. There's the Renewed Hope. Your heals from Flash Heal, Lesser Heal, Greater heal and penance have a 10% increased critical effect chance when you cast on targets with weakened soul. Both of them are great. It seems to me, however, that the empowered renew gets more from it compared to the other one. For the foot rune, we went for dispersion as well to get that mana back, that mini evocation, which regenerates about 36% of our mana in uh, six seconds. If some fights are really mana intensive, we're going to be able to get something back. That's great. There's another rune for the feat called Spirit of the Redeemer, but apparently this one requires the Spirit of Redemption talent to activate it, and that's deep into Holy, I think 21 points in. Uh, let me know how you feel about uh, a potential Holy spec. How would you play it? Let me know in the comments. And so far, what do you prefer to play in Phase 2? Is it uh, a Shadow spec or a Heal? Now let's move to the next thing. For level 40 spells, Priest Rejoice, you get a Mind Blast rank 6, which blasts for 300 shadow damage. 
Now imagine if in shadow form all the spells cost half mana. That's going to be 110 mana for a rank 6 mind blast. Wow. A new rank of fade, but also a new rank of renew, which comes at level 38. That's why I said that the empowered renew rune might be quite nice in phase 2. Divine Spirit rank 2 if you're going for discipline. And also a new rank of flash heal, which heals for 478. Honestly, it's looking really good for priests in phase 2. I'm really looking forward to see how this is going to turn out. If you're looking to get into Season of Discovery or return to Wrath of the Lich King, level some new alts and so on, I highly recommend getting Resid XP add-on. The add-on is free with all its features, and the guides are available up to level 20, making your leveling fast but also efficient since now it incorporates rune guides. Is this add-on a necessity? Not necessarily. But if efficiency is your goal, Resid XP delivers. It has the potential to accelerate your leveling speed by 30 to 100%, ultimately saving you valuable slash playtime that could be better spent elsewhere. Personally, I also use it to quest for gold at max level in each phase because it gives me a good route to follow for maximum gold per hour. And if by any chance in the future you think about making an upgrade to a full version, use my code FROSADAMUS for 5% off, links in the description down below. Hope you enjoyed the video guys, if you did, smash like, and given the fact that you're still watching the video, you might be interested in my second YouTube channel, Prosadamus TV. There's going to be a link right here on the screen, and you can easily find it in the description of the video, right under the Twitch link. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoy phase 2, and may you be blessed by the gods of RNG. Until next time, stay frosty, Bye bye